Ukrainian officials say four people have died in Russia's latest missile strikes targeting the city of Kherson, liberated two weeks ago. A high-rise residential building caught fire in the shelling, which also hit a children's playground. Russian strikes have also been causing severe damage to Ukraine's energy sector. Power companies say it's getting harder to fix important infrastructure and the result is a virtual blackout in some cities. This was Kyiv on Thursday evening. President Zelensky says 15 regions are experiencing difficulties in supplying power and water. Let's uh, go over to the BBC's Ukraine correspondent, James Waterhouse, who's in Dnipro. James, what is the situation like there? Well, you're right, Karin, in the sense that it varies from city to city. In Dnipro, things seem relatively stable. Lifts are out of order in, in some buildings, but we travelled across from the southern city of Krivili yesterday, and it was like being in a black hole, to be honest with you. There was no signal, no water, no power. It was extremely difficult to communicate, and we had to drive out of the city to be able to get online and, and speak to you. This is the picture right across Ukraine, where today we're being told half the country can't be provided with electricity from uh, through the country's infrastructure. Russia's new tactics are being felt by just about everyone. But when these strikes happen, devastating as they are, there are still huge efforts by the Ukrainian authorities to try and repair. We followed one team in the southern Kherson region. The dark cloud of Russia's tactics reaches most corners of Ukraine. It's felt by everyone, but a path through is often found, as well as a chance to repair. Engineers from Ukraine's biggest energy company head out to work. Today's job, a downed electricity cable, caused by a shell. This part of the Kherson region used to be the front line. Landmines mean they can't work beyond the tape. How much more difficult has your job become? Before, work like this was only necessary after extreme weather like hurricanes, so one or two incidents. Now it's like we're building the whole cable network from scratch again. This feels like a never-ending task under really dangerous conditions. The authorities, in their words, want to give people power and warmth, but the shelling isn't stopping and it's happening right across this region. A typically once in a five year repair has become a daily ritual. For these rural communities, so too has not having water or power. In this area, it's been eight months. Most have long left, but some have stayed the course. We bump into Bogdan who wants to show us where he lives. As we get inside, he shows us the damage before it gets too much. Maybe I should go to Kyiv and ask for help there, he says. Madness, he tells me. Do you worry what your future looks like? I just don't know what to do. I've never cried like this in my life. Now I'm an old man. Ukraine is a darker place because of Russia's targeting of its infrastructure. Its resolve hasn't necessarily been weakened, but more people are suffering. Here we have the authorities in that Kherson region telling people to leave. They have set up a hotline where people will be paid uh, to take transportation out of the Kherson region to a safer area, in their words. They'll also have accommodation paid for as well. But for so many people, that is not an option. We're talking about communities that have chosen to stay under eight months of occupation or been forced to. 
DTEC, the energy company we followed, the boss there has urged people to leave the country uh, because of the strain on the infrastructure. So it's an impossible situation and it shows that liberation uh, is a complicated outcome. It doesn't bring instant relief. There are still steep challenges facing people despite Russian uh, retreats. And James, to what extent are the attacks continuing on Kherson? Liberated, as you say, only recently, but still from across the river where the, other, where the Russians have, have retreated to, the, the barrage comes. This was the exact fear, because when you look across the Dnipro River in the south of Ukraine, this river that cuts Ukraine in two, it's formed much of the front line. And it's from... It's over this river which both sides launch artillery. Russia has uh, shelled uh, Ukrainian cities further north on a nightly basis. So it's a tactic often deployed. I've been down to the Dnipro River in Kherson and it's strangely calm. It is stable in that sense. The Russians have pulled back. They've pulled back uh, a kilometre or so from the river itself. But it's the overhead threat where artillery is being launched from both sides. And throughout the city you have the thud of incoming and outgoing artillery. And of course, overnight, we've seen another missile strike where seven people have reportedly been killed in a residential block. So again, this is a city free in one sense, but far from safe in another. James, thank you. James Waterhouse there, live from Dnipro.